when Dr. Cheryl Rossin visited the Federation on vacation, she had no idea what her presence would reduce and how it would transform the lives of families that were facing challenging and somewhat uncharted territory. For her, this deficit in the lives of these families and even educators in the Federation would satisfy the passion that she had so vigorously pursued over years of study in the field of autism. I started working um, on the island of St. Kitts really by accident. Um, I came to this lovely place as a visitor and um, my friend who I came with is part of the University of Medicine and Health Science, which is where the workshops are being held. And from being connected on the island and from knowing many of the local uh, people, they introduced me to a family who was having some difficulties with their son and they thought that he may have autism. And so I was on my vacation, but I met this family um, and I discussed autism with them and some red flags and signs and symptoms of the disorder and really what they should do here. Autism. That very complex yet tender disorder which touches the lives of those individuals who are fortunate enough to be diagnosed, as well as those who try to cope, never having the opportunity to be properly diagnosed and assisted. I have been working specifically within the autism population for over 20 years. Um, and when I received my training, I'm actually originally from Michigan in the States. Um, I went to a university where I was able to coordinate and design my own program of study and so I studied autism from many different fields the field of psychology the field of medicine the field of social work the field of education um, and so and including speech pathology so I learned about autism and individuals with that disorder from many different perspectives it appeared to be divine intervention as Dr. Rosin was connected with a family who needed her expertise as they were facing unusual challenges in raising their young, vibrant child. The arrival of Dr. Rosin was a dream come true, and what started out as a somewhat casual inquiry blossomed into a program that is shedding light and bringing relief to children, parents, families, and educators throughout St. Kitts and Nevis who have been touched by autism. One course participant, Camille Nisbeth Paris, explained that the intervention by Dr. Cheryl Rosin in collaboration with the Ministry of Education is exactly what so many have been waiting for. We have kids dealing with autism every day and the thing is we have communities, parents, teachers who don't understand what autism is and if you don't understand what it is, when you have kids who present with autism, you may be unable to treat or address it correctly and with autism you have to understand and be at the level of the child in order to give them the best therapy, attention, care um, that they need. It's one thing to not know but when you don't know you say the child is willful, you say the child is disobedient but if you understand what autism is you can't say that child is, um, is being willful because it's, it's within their disability. So we have to learn how to work around those needs and I definitely think that this training was very timely. It's needed. Persons in the country with hearing issues and several children have been referred to me with hearing concerns. But looking at some of the behaviors and the concerns of the parents, we are realizing that they are looking more along the autistic spectrum. And so it was very beneficial for us to be exposed to this training in that we are able, better able now to pick up some of the signs and symptoms of children having this disorder. One of the characteristics of a child with aut on the autistic spectrum is I'm calling your name and you're not answering. And that's a concern for parents because they, they feel that the child is not hearing them. But in truth and in fact, they are hearing, but they're just not, because they're in their own little world, they're not responding to you calling them. For one family in particular, Dr. Rosin's visit became almost magical. 
as the years of frustration began to evaporate when in just over a month, the experience and strategies she shared began to result in tangible benefits for them. And the child who I began working with was nonverbal and he left after six weeks speaking in three and four word phrases. The Mashals were so impressed with the progress that they reached out for assistance for others on the island experiencing similar issues. They really are telling people and advocates for autism awareness and so Mrs. Marshall um, really it was her idea to come here and to continue this training um, and so she helped me get in contact with the government and we I made a proposal and said that I would like to do a project here and it has multiple phases to it uh, and so that started about a year ago where I came and had my exclusive meeting with the government to put the plan into place. And phase one, which was autism training for 45 teachers, was just this past September. And so from there, we chose eight individuals to receive what's called an autism certificate, and they are receiving that now. Well, I hope that um the government can continue to bring Dr. Rosen here so that she can get as many parents and educators trained up so that they would be able to have early detection and train teachers and parents alike just like me because it's not only limited to um, teachers or educators but parents can do it. I'm a parent, I'm not a teacher. and. I do it with Matthew every single day. It is very easy. It's, 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 um, it's not medicine. It's only a therapy. It's just in how you engage your child. An autism certification clinic over the period January 5th to 8th trained and certified a number of individuals in diagnosing autism. Participants were also trained in therapeutic activities for children with autism. A student support officer at the Curriculum Development Unit, supervisor for early childhood education, the coordinator for the Learning Support Department, as well as an education officer in Nevis, a rehabilitation specialist, and two speech and language specialists participated in the event. Coordinator of Learning Support, as well as the Autism Certification Program, Josephine Claxton Richardson, said the training came after Phase 1, which was held in September 2015, when a cohort of teachers were trained. This time round, for this part of the stage of the program, Dr. Rosin attended with her colleague, um, Lizette Lopez, and they trained eight persons in the Certificate of Autism so we'll have specialists on the island and that's really good for saying kids and the Ministry of Education have been very instrumental in making sure that this program came on stream because they recognize the importance of having somebody or persons on the island that are specialized in, 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 in diagnosing autism and that's what the eight persons who have passed I must say the certification program this afternoon because we actually did our exam this afternoon and passed the course with good grades as well that we identify the issues, the, the, best, the better it is, the better results we'll have for the children that are come forward with the issue of autism. What I will really say is that we are getting there. We are now getting some tools that can make us more efficient and more effective in identifying children with autistic disorders and so we are very grateful for that um, training because before that we just because of experience i've worked for 20 plus years in special education so from the experience you can pick up signs and symptoms of children that have the the condition but now we have more persons exposed to it and it is something that even from the early childhood level we can pick them up that early so that you can address their needs. Our resources are limited, however we are in making a step in the right direction in getting persons trained to identify and hopefully what we will do in the future, not too distant I, I hope, is to now build the resources in persons to work with such children so that they, become, they can become more productive citizens in our society.
the existing needs being expressed by families who had for so long desired assistance for their children, who appeared to have some form of disability, soon forged a strong network of partnerships. The University of Medical Health Sciences, UMHC, agreed to assist by allowing its campus to be used as a venue for training. Historically, yes, we've had a very close association with the Ministry of Education since the founding of this institution, and we've had uh, tremendous tremendous interaction and support from the Ministry of Education and um, that has only been uh, brought closer by having this uh, workshop. Lisette Lopez, speech and language pathologist, assisted in facilitating the very interactive training. I got involved um, in this particular project by Dr. Cheryl Rosen. I've known her uh, for many years. She's actually the person who trained me and was my professor at the university. And her passion for autism is really what drew me to it. So we've worked together for several years and she wanted to bring me along to give my input and assist her in the diagnosis and treatment of autism for children on this island. The very hands-on training included screening of children suspected of autism spectrum disorder, as well as advice for the parent. Yes, it takes them by surprise. Sometimes they themselves might be in what you call denial, in that they might have seen the signs and symptoms themselves, but they do, they're not willing to accept and get whatever help is needed. Some of them get the help after they have reached frustration point, and after several persons have said, well, I am concerned, there's something wrong. And so it, the, the process is getting easier. And in 2010, when the, there was a memorandum of understanding signed between the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health and Social Development to give educators the push to encourage parents, because you can only encourage them. And so the Memorandum of Understanding gives us teeth to get parents to understand that they, we are trying to help their children, not harm them. And so you find more parents and more schools have been actually, because a lot of the calls we get, we get them from the schools. And so it is much easier to get in touch with the parents and kind of get them to understand the concerns. Additionally, participants and parents were introduced to play therapy. It was quite interesting to see some of them who I've known for years and we have not been able to get to them and see how they respond just by playing and getting some of them to actually say words and follow directions, something that you have been trying for for years with some of them. And so it was quite interesting to see that approach and see how it has been, just in a few minutes, very effective for some of the children. One therapy that we learned at the training is the play project therapy, and it's actually one of the best um, therapies for kids with autism. And one thing that's good about it is when Dr. Solomon created it, it's actually very low um, costing to implement because it's simply play. You're playing with the kids. It doesn't cost much to play with a child. And play helps to awaken that, that lacking social impairment in children with autism that you normally see. So it doesn't cost much to play. So we need to help more people understand how to implement play, um, play therapy with kids with autism as a resource, but in general, we, we do need more, more resources in the Federation. We need to share our resources and knowledge base, and that's one of my pleas for us to get going, um, going forward. More resources, more help, more knowledge, because the kids are number one, our number one priority, and we have to help them.